I ever talked about my love with Billy Joel before on this channel? I don't think I have, but I love Billy Joel. I'm his biggest fan. Actually, that's not true because I saw him live in 2015 at Madison Square Garden and um, there were some pretty big fans there. <laughs> there was a guy who was sitting behind us who knew every single word to every single song and was dancing and he was more entertaining than watching Billy himself. Hello, Bibliophiles. <laughs> my name is Jill and I'm here today to do a book on haul and a book haul. Two in one. Nuts. Two and two. Okay, math. I read it. I don't do math. Also, shout out to my best friend who gave me this metal straw for Christmas one year and I mocked her for it because I was like, I hate this. Um, and now I use it literally every day. So thank you for knowing me better than I know myself. As you know, if you watched my last haul video, I bought a lot of books during this pandemic, um, which is still ongoing. So wear your masks and be safe and don't gather in groups of more than whatever your local government tells you, but probably less than what they tell you. But the buying has not stopped and I have continued to purchase more and more books and I really am getting uh, like worried about space. And I used to be really worried about having more books unread than read on my shelves, but lately I'm like, why is that a worry? Like, don't you want to have more books to read than what you have read? Because that means you have like more to pick from? I don't know. So I don't worry about that, but I worry about space. So and as I've said before, I'm trying to be more ruthless with, not ruthless, I'm trying to shape my bookshelves to be the shelves of like reflecting who I am now as a reader and only keeping books that I really genuinely love or that I think I'm going to read again or that are important to me for some reason. So <laughs> I've, I've tried to instigate a one in one out rule. I actually don't know if, the, if these work out, the math works out, I didn't even count them, but it looks about the same. Um, there's also some books that I have that uh, are not here because they're either pre-ordered or because I've already read them and loaned them out to someone or because I bought them and then left them at my parents' house in Newfoundland because I couldn't fit them in my suitcase. I'm gonna go through the books I bought first because I talked about some of these in my last, the way, not last video, the video I talked about what should I read next. Um, so I talked about a lot of those there and then I will talk about the books I'm getting rid of. So yeah, buckle up because it's gonna be a long video. Let's start first with what I'm currently reading. Um, as I mentioned in that video where I talk about what should I read next, I'm still reading How to Survive a Plague, the story of how activists and scientists tamed AIDS by David France. This is quite a long book, it's over 600 pages, and I'm just over halfway through. This is the story, of course, uh, how about uh, the AIDS crisis in New York. Speci it's specifically set in New York because David France himself uh, was living in New York at the time of the crisis in the 80s, the late 70s, early 80s, into the 90s. Um, and he himself, uh, as of this part of the book, uh, has not been diagnosed with AIDS or HIV, but uh, he has many friends and colleagues and lovers who uh, were diagnosed or who were very sick or who died. So this is very much a first-hand account of the social aspect of AIDS, like the, the activist movement, but also um, looks a lot of the science of it. So it's, um, I have lots more to say about this book, but I'll say that for a review. <laughs> that's what I'm currently reading. Um, I will say that this is interesting. So that's my one word review of this book. Um, then I'm currently also reading House of Trelawney by uh, Hannah Rothschild. This is what I picked up for um, my my small book club with my friends uh, Thea and Stacy. We read I don't know, book every couple of months together. So this is what we're currently reading. I'm, I'm, I only started it maybe yesterday or the day before and so I'm only 50 pages into this. Um, I'm not sure I feel about this yet but of course there might be a review of that coming up. Maybe not but anyway this is what I'm currently reading. As I also have talked about, I have been obsessively watching books in Lena's channel and the books I picked up because of her, specifically because of her, are the um, African Trilogy by Chinua Achebe. This is the Penguin Classics Deluxe Edition version because I've decided I want to start collecting these in the classics form. Like I don't, I'm not going to collect all of them just for the sake of having them, but um, if I read books that are available in this form, I want to buy this form. So this is the first, this is the whole trilogy. The first novel, of course, is Things Fall Apart, um, which I have not yet read, but I think I'm going to pick up in October because I am really, really interested in it. It's calling to me. Um, and maybe I'll finish the whole thing. Who knows? Uh, but I'm really feeling picking this up soon. I also picked up We Need New Names by Novala Bulawayo. And this is, I think, a story about friends who live in Zimbabwe. I don't actually know the whole premise yet. Um, but again, Books and Linda said that she loved it. So this is also really calling to me. So like, <laughs> this is not a what should I read video, but you know, if you have recommendations, you know, always feel free to leave comments. And then also I picked up Gloria Naylor's Mama Day. Again, calling to me. This is, I think, Books and Linda's favorite book. Well, one of her favorite books by one of her favorite authors. So um, this I want to pick up, but I will say again, like, I'm really picky about font. I've talked about this before, but I this font really bothers me um, because it is, it's almost like it's too bold. Do you know what I mean? Am I crazy? Is that too bold? That's too bold for me. But anyway, 
it will not hopefully affect my reading experience and hopefully I will love this book so that's also something I picked up and I'm looking forward to reading. Another book that I'm very interested in getting to very soon is Catherine Hernandez's Hernandez, that's hard to say, Crosshairs. Catherine Hernandez is a Canadian author. This is her second novel. She is a playwright uh, for, for originally. That's what her first things were published, but she wrote her first novel, Scarborough, which is somewhere on my shelf. I loved Scarborough. It was one of my favorite books I read. Like the more time I've had away from it, the more I appreciated it. And this is her uh, newest book. So from what I understand from the very, I didn't read the whole blurb because I didn't want to spoil myself, but um, this sounds like it might be very, very different, but still very interested in reading that. Then as I mentioned in my last review of the book Cast by Isabel Wilkerson, I picked up her first book. I think it's her first book. I actually don't know for sure, but this book, the research she did in this book led her to write Cast, from what I understand from listening to an interview with her. But this is The Warmth of Other Suns, The Epic Story of America's Great Migration. Um, and this won the Pulitzer, which it says here on the cover, which I didn't know. Uh, and the National Book Critics Circle Award for Nonfiction. So obviously um, a honker of a book, well received. And I, if you haven't watched my review of Cast, I loved that book. It's one of my favorite books of the year. Um, probably my best nonfiction of the year. And uh, so I'm look, really looking forward to reading this too. And I might pick it up as soon as I finish uh, the AIDS book because, um, although I don't know if I'm ready for another big honker, but I don't care. Like her writing is so, so good that I'm really excited to pick this up. I popped into my local bookstore because I hadn't been there in six weeks and of course I had to pick up some stuff because I am who I am. So I picked up Butter Honey Pig Bread by Francesca Ikuwazi. I'm sorry if that's mispronounced, but this is uh, long listed for the Giller Prize this year. I believe this is set originally in Nigeria and then moves to Montreal and it's about twin sisters uh, and a mother and some kind of spirit birth. I can't really remember, but that's okay because I don't really want to know. But all I have to know is that there are twins and I'm going to pick it up because I love stories about twins, especially twin sisters, any kind of sibling, but especially twin sisters. I'm really, really gung-ho for that. So I read the first like 10 pages of this and I loved the writing. So I think I'm getting along well with this as well. The last couple books here I have are nonfiction books that I picked up um, thinking about nonfiction November slash just because I wanted to buy books. <laughs> so um, I have The City by Joel Kotkin. I first heard about this book must be 10 years ago or more. Uh, a friend of mine in university was reading this in a class and I saw her reading it and I was like, what's that about? And she's like, it's about the history of cities. And I was like, I want to read that. And then I found it. Um, so I bought it. <laughs> I, ha I actually hadn't forgot about it. I had been um, going through my Goodreads to read list, which I only use actually as like a place to not forget about books I'm interested in, not like as a record of what I own. It's like what I don't want to forget about. And I I was going through and cleaning it up and things I didn't want to read anymore and this was still on the list and I was like oh I really still want to read that and then I found it and I was like well then I'm Miss Fate I must read it. I also picked up The Yellow House by Sarah M. Broom and this won some kind of award. This was like a New York Times like best books of 2019 which um, I quite like their lists I think they're really useful. I thought it also won uh, the National Book Award that's what it won for nonfiction. so this is also um, you know a really well a well-known bestseller book. Also there's a map I just realized in the beginning of this book and you know everyone on booktube loves a good map so uh, excited to get to that soon. I also picked up All the President's Men, uh, The Greatest Reporting Story of All Time by Carl Bernstein and Bob Woodward. I know Bob Woodward is like a bit in hot water these days, whatever. I wanted to pick this up because I feel like this is like classic nonfiction. I have heard that this is a book that kind of shaped how people write narrative journalism. So I really want to read this. I'm, cur I'm very, very curious about it. And of course, if you don't know, this is about the um, Nixon Watergate scandal, writing about that and the exp expose of it. Ooh, this font is also atrocious. But anyway, um, yeah, I'm just, I just felt like more than anything, this is something that I should have in my arsenal of having read as like a, a starting point of how nonfiction has been shaped and I I'm really interested in like the history of how we tell stories so that's a different video for a different time probably but yeah I thought like I should pick this up and my friend Jen and I might do like a buddy read she's already read it but we might do it as like a reread buddy read for her uh yeah because I'm very curious about this and then I wanted to pick up some Canadian books for nonfiction November because you know hashtag canlit um but I I have more in the mail coming but these are the two that I have I picked up Chop Suey Nation the surprising history and vibrant present of small town Chinese restaurants from Victoria, BC to Fogo Island, Newfoundland. 
in Labrador. This is uh, by Anne Hui. And I first heard about this, my dad told me this book was on the radio and so I was talking about it and I was like, that sounds so interesting. So she goes, um, her parents I think owned a restaurant and uh, she goes across the country and like visits these small town Chinese restaurants. Back to the history of these kind of like local Chinese food restaurants in every place across the, the country and I think that sounds so interesting. So I am very excited to read this. And then I went to the local museum when I was home in, in St. John's called The Rooms and they talk, uh, there's a huge exhibit there about Beaumont Hamill, the Battle of Beaumont Hamill and Newfoundland's role in the First World War. And it, it's funny because I studied a lot of this uh, like first of all in like curriculum in, in junior high and high school but also in university I looked at this a lot and just out of my own interest about Newfoundland's role in the First World War but there's lots I don't know. I don't know a lot about like what happened about life at home. Um, so I wanted to make a book about Newfoundland life during that time so I picked up The Danger Tree, Memory, War and the Search for a Family's Past by David McFarland. This, I believe, is like a memoir slash um, like family history, basically. So it says, weaving together the major events of a 20th century in Newfoundland, the tuberculosis epidemic, the Great Seal Hunt disaster, and the Confederation debate, and the First World War. Those are in the wrong order, <laughs> because uh, the Confe Confederation debate happened after the First World War. <laughs> but anyway, it has some good blurbs in here, like Alice Monroe blurbed it, Mordecai Richler, the Toronto Star. Like, this is a pretty, sounds like it's going to be pretty good. So i um, excited to read this. So that is the acquiring part of the video. And these are the books I'm going to be getting rid of. Um, the first book I'm getting rid of entirely because I finally feel free. I finally feel validated in my feelings about this book. And thank you to Kieran from Katie Books. I'm going to link his channel down below because Kieran, his videos are like watching a one-man show. He is hilarious. He's also an incredible reviewer. I'm, I've been binging his videos for the past week. Um, yeah, I love his videos, but he <laughs> did a whole video, which I will also link below, talking about how much he hates this book and how it doesn't make any sense and how, how bad it is. And I, guys, I'm just gonna own up to it. I don't like Allie Smith. I've read two books by her. I've read this one and I have read Autumn. And I started to read some other books by her, like a couple of different ones, and I put them down because I didn't like them. Uh, and I don't get it. I don't understand. I'm not an Allie Smith stan. I think she's bad. Like, I just don't like her writing. And I also just want to say this, this is a, a minor thing, but I hate this font. I hate how it's so big. I hate how it she writes like prose poetry but it's actually not. I just don't like Allie Smith and I don't like this book and I'm so glad to finally get it off my shelf. So thank you Kieran uh, for giving me the, the, the strength and the freedom to say goodbye to this very bad book. I don't feel strongly about anything else on this list. That was just the one that I feel was um, a yoke around my neck and I now feel free. The other ones are just books that uh, I like well enough or I just don't really care about and I need to get, make some room on my shelf so something gotta go. Um, so the first one is The Night Gardener by Jonathan Oxier. Oxier? This won the Governor General's Award uh, for, I think it was for YA, I can't remember, but this is like a YA children's book. My friend Stacy recommended this to me and she loved it and I didn't. I actually can't even remember what it's about. I mean it's about like a spooky kind of night gardener situation. Um, but it took me a very long time to read, like a couple of months, and I I just have no reason to keep it. Like it was fine, but I have no memory of it. Then I'm getting rid of, sorry guys, The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. I decided it was time. I kept this because I love this cover. I think it is beautiful. Um, although I did crack the spine, which drives me crazy, <laughs> as you know. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna get rid of this because I, don't share the hype about this. I don't, I didn't think it was that good. I thought it was, again, fine. I was like a three star read, um, but I didn't love it. I didn't find it moving. I didn't cry. I wanted it to be over. Uh, so there's for sure someone who will appreciate this more than me, so that has to go. I'm finally getting rid of my copy of How to Be a Woman by Caitlin Morin. I had this, oh gosh, years ago. When did it come out? I remember liking it when I read it, because uh, this was like all the rage in... 2011. So I probably read it uh, 2012, 2013, and I liked it. But I mean, I haven't picked it up since then. I haven't even thought about it. So I'm gonna pass it on. Uh, yeah, whatever, you know? And guys, I, I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna admit it. I have no interest in reading Carry On. I just don't. I just think I'm done with Rainbow Rowell. And I've heard some people say it's really good. 
but I I just don't want to read it like I just don't and so it's it's big it's such a big book it's taking up so much space on my shelf and there are so many other people who would love to read this so like I just should get rid of it I should pass it on if I am dying to read it someday I'll get it from the library but I just can't imagine that this is going to be something I oh I didn't even realize how nice the, the hardback is though that's quite nice and the end pages are I see I haven't even opened this book I've had this for like over a year and haven't even opened it um quite lovely actually but someone else will get much more joy out of it. I can't keep it because I like the end papers. That's crazy. Um, when I have such limited space. I'm getting rid of The Antagonist by Lynn Cody. I read this because it's part of the CBC's 100 novels that make you proud to be Canadian. I did a video on that. I'll link it below. Um, but I just, this book was fine. Like, it was again, like a three-star book. It was fine. Um, but I didn't, like, I don't have any love of it. I'm not gonna read it again. It's about a hockey player who um, gets into some trouble in his past and he's like really bitter about it and he keeps bringing it up <laughs> and he's like older and he hasn't let it go and there's some kind of his dad's also quite sick and so there's I think it's told through emails and letters and stuff and like uh, Facebook messages and like and like um, like diary entries and stuff uh, so yeah it's it's fine like a perfectly fine book would recommend reading it if you're interested but uh, just don't need to keep it if you watched my childhood book unboxing videos, I talked about how I loved the book Three Cups of Tea by Greg Mortensen. And I have, this is the follow-up book called Stones Into Schools, promoting peace with books, not bombs, in Afghanistan and Pakistan. And I really, really loved that first book. Um, but I, could, I knew there was controversy, I couldn't remember what it was. And then somebody commented on my video and told me that the controversy was that he didn't actually do the things that he said he did. So I was like, mm, maybe I shouldn't keep the second one because... I don't know like I guess if I, if I read it as fiction <laughs> like I keep it um but I mean I just have so many other books I want to read that like why am I holding on to this when there's just like other books that are like probably better another book that I haven't read I'm getting rid of is the An Ocean of Minutes by Thea Lim I bought I think I've had this for over a year or almost a year and I picked it up because I knew that it had, had like a lot of attention I'd heard the name around a bit and since picking it up, I've only heard like not good things about this book. So I'm just gonna get rid of it. Again, lots of other amazing things I want to read. Why am I holding on to this? Well, I actually don't even know what it's about. So I'm just gonna get rid of it. Um, another book I read that I'm gonna get rid of is uh, Bill Rose, The Worst and Best of the Premiers and Some We Never Had, a political report card. This is about um, Newfoundland and Labrador Premiers. Um, this book is bad. <laughs> it's really poorly written. It reads a lot like Inside Baseball. Um, I thought this was gonna be really interesting to like learn more about Newfoundland history and about uh, the politics in Newfoundland because there's been some interesting things happen and like Newfoundland politicians are interesting colorful characters but this is just really bad. It reads very much like a who's who and because he worked on um, Bill Rowe himself like worked with a lot of these people so it felt a bit like spilling secrets about your friends and I just thought it was kind of cringy so I don't need to keep this. This is not particularly useful um, as a historical document, so I'm gonna say goodbye to that. Another book that I held on to, despite controversy, was The Underground Storyteller by Alex Day. If you were around like YouTubes in like the early 2010s up to like the 20, 2014, Alex Day was quite a prominent YouTuber. He was he lived with Charlie Sukulik, uh Charlie McDonald, and uh, he fell from grace spectacularly during the whole crisis of uh, YouTubers being like outed as being horrible people and like sexually abusing young fans. Um, but he wrote this book <laughs> and I am so interested in the London Underground that I was like yeah and I and I thought he was a smart guy so I thought maybe it would be interested and I pre-ordered it and so I was like whatever I'll just read it. I read it. Woo it's Bad. Like it's it's poorly written. It doesn't actually say anything about the history of the underground or very little history of the underground, which is what I wanted it for. I mean, I do I love the cover and the publishing. Like it's really really beautiful. Um, but I just I'm like why am I, and like he signed it. Like you know, not that it matters. And like you know, I have copy five hundred and forty one of like two thousand or something. Um, but I just think. I don't need this. There's other books about the history of the underground that I can read that actually tell me something that aren't by people who I think are probably not great people. So that's gonna go. I'm also saying goodbye to Escape from Camp 14, One Man's Remarkable Odyssey from North Korea to Freedom in the West by Blaine Harden. I read this uh, many years ago on a John Green recommendation and it was good, I enjoyed it. But I think since this has come out, like, so the guy uh, who escaped, I can't remember his name, Shin Dong Hyuk, uh, he escaped, uh, and his story of escape is pretty, pretty remarkable. It's since come out that uh, 
some of it might not be true, but I, I also don't even know if, anyway, I, I don't know enough about it to like provide any kind of commentary about it. I also think that maybe his memory was um, very much broken from being trapped in a camp, but whatever, I don't know. I don't know enough about it, so wash my hands of that history. But um, I thought this was interesting, but I don't think I need to keep it. Someone else could find it, read it, and enjoy it. Another book that I really enjoyed, but it's time to say goodbye to, is Three Things About Elsie by Joanna Cannon. This is about Flo, who is an elderly woman who is in a home, and she is uh, our assisted living facility. She's losing her memory, but she has a best friend, Elsie. And throughout this book, a, a man from their from her past shows up, and or she thinks he does, and she's trying to kind of solve this mystery about why he's there. And because her memory is unreliable, she's an unreliable narrator, and we don't really know what's going on. It's actually very funny, and I found this quite touching and um, heartwarming. A lot of this stuff is very, very good. Um, to be honest with you, the reason I'm getting rid of this book, <laughs> this copy, is because I absolutely hate this size, and I hate the font. Like, it's so big. It's like a size... Can you even see that? It's like a size 14 font or 16. Like I really, really hate it. <laughs> I, and I actually had, had a hard time reading this because the font was so big. I just like couldn't really read it. So if I find a copy of this in like a different format, like maybe a smaller format, <laughs> I would keep it. But it's it's a quite honking of a book, which it, and it doesn't need to be just because the font is so enormous. So um, yeah, I'm, uh, I liked this book. I would recommend it. I just don't want to keep this on my shelf. Another book, these are all books I've read. Yeah, so there's five books I've read. So this is um, The Messenger by Marcus Zusak. This book is, I wanted to keep this actually because this is the um, Australian edition of the book, which I really, really loved. Uh, but this is about, what is it about? It's about a guy who's a messenger and I can't remember anything else about it. I genuinely can't remember anything else about it other than the other guy's like a messenger and he has something about playing cards. But I am not gonna read this book um, again. Probably. I mean, I love the cover. This is why I kept it for so long. Um, but I, again, I just need space and I, I don't have any feelings about this book. I remember reading it and thinking, oh, that's nice. I mean, I love the book Thief, but I don't love this. So this can go. I'm getting rid of Adverbs by Daniel Handler. This has been a journey for me with this book. I don't even think I ever finished this book. I think I had like a couple stories left in it. And I remember having a hard time finishing it because it's just not his normal style of writing or what I particularly like about his writing. Um, I think his YA is more appealing to me. It's fine, but I never loved it enough to obviously finish it. A book I kept when I initially did my sweep earlier this year, but then I thought about it and I was like, why am I keeping this book? This is Confessions of the Fox by Jordi Rosenberg. This is one of the worst books I read last year, um, which I, I don't like saying that because this book is I think what it's trying to do, like the, the intention of this book is really, really interesting. It's, but it's also very complex and poorly executed. So this is the story of um, like, a, what is this Jack Shepard who was like a historically famous thief, um, a retelling of Jack Shepard's life, if Jack Shepard was a trans man. Like that's a cool concept. Um, but then what this book tries to do, it tell that story found through a manuscript but in the footnotes, it also tries to tell two different stories where like the author who is like the academic who finds this text is like going through a personal crisis as a person who's going through their own identity as a trans person. Um, and then as well as losing their job and trying to like talk to a pharmaceutical company about getting this history. But also the story itself is really like the actual historical manuscript that's being written is very confusing because it feels like it's not a historical manuscript. Um, and there's, it's like surprisingly really like graphic in its um, like body mutilation. <laughs> there's like a, a, like a, a surgery scene in here, which is kind of gross. And uh, there's also like some weird sex scenes in here. Like not weird as in like the scenes are fine, but like it just doesn't feel like it belongs at all in this book. It's really just like kind of comes out of nowhere. And then the, also the characters are poorly described and like the relationships that make no sense because they're not ever really fleshed out. So this book is just has a lot, like if, if it had one of those things, it wouldn't be a big deal, but because it has so many of these like complicated storylines that don't ever really meet their full potential, it's just a bad book. So I'm gonna get rid of it. Um, but I did like, I did like the premise and I understood what was, what was trying to happen. So I read more from Jordi Rosenberg, um, for sure. I just think that this was uh, a rough first go. So that can go. And the last two books I'm gonna get rid of are two Bill Bryson books, guys. I'm getting rid of The Road to Little Dribbling and The Body, A Guide for Occupants. 
here's the thing. So if you watched my, again, my childhood unboxing video, or if you watched my very first video, I think it was my first video, or my second video about authors I can't quit, um, I love Bill Bryson. I have almost all of his, I have read everything he's written except for two books. One I have over on my shelf, A Short History of Nearly Everything, which I'm keeping because that's his like most famous book. Um, I'm keeping it as like a, to read one day because I don't want to ever like not have a Bill Bryson to read. Um, and the other one is The African Diaries because they're hard to find. So those are the two books, I, but everything else he's written, he's written like 15 or 20 books. I've read all of them and I like almost all of them. But the past couple of years, the stuff he's, he's come out with, like especially these two, his last, these are his most recent books. I really didn't enjoy them. Like this one I found really boring and really like, he sounds a lot like a grumpy old man in this. And this one, I, there was a lot of body shaming in here, a lot of fat shaming, a lot of um, some things I did like, like his normal stuff of like going back in time and telling like quirky stories about people who were in science and like weird stuff they did. I enjoyed that stuff. But I just like think that he's a crotchety old man and I don't think I enjoyed the way that he wrote in either one of these books. So I'm going to get rid of both of them because I kind of feel like I don't, I, I used to think I wanted to have all of his collection, but now I'm like, why? I should just read the things I like. Um, so yeah, those are going to be donated to someone. Maybe someone else will find joy in them, but uh, they're, they're both really big. They're clunky and they take up too much space on my shelf. Time to fill up my shelf with books that I really enjoy and that reflect me as a reader right now. I'm sweating, guys. It's like 27 degrees out today. And here's the rule. If you live in Ontario, you can't take your air conditioner out until after Thanksgiving weekend, which is the first weekend in October in Canada for those who don't know. Uh, so people who take out the air conditioner in September because it's chilly, we all know it always gets warm again. So I've learned from many years here. I love on Halloween books and I love buying books. And so I feel like this is like my dream video of like my two favorite things combining. If you've made it to the end of this video, thank you for sticking here with me. I have some exciting content coming out in the next couple of weeks. I have a video coming out on the 4th of October, which I'm very excited about. So stay tuned for that. And um, yeah, I'm going to go get some lunch because um, it's actually like four o'clock. I slept in till noon today because when you work a lot of overtime, your body doesn't understand time anymore. <laughs> so I'm gonna go get some late lunch. I'm gonna go start editing this video and then meet a friend for ice cream, which is so nice because I've been quarantining for the past two weeks, not because the government says I have to, but because I am a good citizen and wanna protect people. So I, after I got off the plane, I stayed mostly in my house. I went and did laundry. I went for a walk one morning, but I haven't seen anyone. So I'm excited to see my friends. I would love to know any of your thoughts about the books that I've either unhauled or hauled in this video. Let me know below. And I'm also working on, uh, just, just so you know, I am working on a bookshelf tour. It takes a lot of time actually filming it for the right lighting and looking at my shelf because it's a bit of a mess. And also, you know, when you take books off the shelf, it's a mess. So I am going to have hopefully a bookshelf tour for you in October. That's my, that's my hope. Um, so stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for watching guys. I hope you're all well. Um, and I hope you're safe and I hope your family and friends are all well. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.